Good morning, guys. So, uh, Melissa here, starting to feel better. Um, yesterday I had, um, last night I had just gone to bed, totally exhausted. One of my sons is sick, so I'm just like, stay away from me, you know, stay away from me, you're gonna get me sick. So, um, just getting ready to head out the door, got some exercise done, uh, hopefully this pimple will clear up. I don't know what happened there. Anyways, um, wear, wear your Christian beliefs as a badge of honor. That's what I want to talk about. Um, I woke up this morning, saw a message from one of my sons saying, you know, he couldn't be my friend anymore. And I'm like, why? Why is that? Is that because I tell you the truth? That's why you can't be my friend anymore? So, basically... You know, he has gotten into this whole cultural thing of trans and everything. And it is prevalent. It is very prevalent right now. It is the thing to do. And if you aren't, you will be persecuted. It's at the banks. It's everywhere, right? One of my sons is a teacher. They want to mutilate little kids now. They now, um, the church was talking about this too. They now want... Um, to change boys into girls and girls into boys without parents' permission, okay? So this is how bad it's getting. And I'm saying I think parents need to homeschool. I really do. I think it's come to that point that we need to homeschool our kids. The government is just not doing their job. They're supposed to be protecting people, protecting parents. We saw how France just decided to allow abortion in their constitution. Um, Michael Knowles does a job, good job on this, Michael Knowles. And he's like, um, I left a couple comments there. And, you know, people think it's like 1% of abortions, like our 1% of statistics, 1% that's needed. No, it's not. No, it's not. I don't know where people get these statistics. People go and get abortions since years ago, just out of convenience. Um, they're never safe. We hear the argument about safe abortions. They're never safe. So um, society is just really going down, which shows us even more to be watchful. Jesus said to be watchful, to watch for him on a regular basis, because he is going to come like a thief in the night, a thief in the night when you least expect it. And if you think about a thief in the night, right? People don't expect it. That's how, um, that's how they're overcome. They don't expect somebody to come in. So we're living in a day and age where marriage is not, marriage is not glorified. Um, who was it? Was it Jordan Peterson? Yeah, Jordan Peterson had talked about how, like, right now in this day and age, people are being more sexually free than ever. Um, I think only 30% of people are virgins, young people now. And how women are not being, they're not getting married until like 30. They've missed the boat with the kids. Um, so we're just seeing the decline of society go down really bad. And the Bible talks about how there will be a remnant of God's people. There will be those who truly believe in him until the end so until that day you know wear your christian christianity proudly it's an honor to be a christian uh there's no shame in it uh to be chosen to be one of his to respond whichever way you did to the gospel or to think about you know choosing christ is the best thing that you can do. I mean, I don't want to say choosing him, but responding to him to choose to believe the gospel, I guess, in when he calls you, or to take what you do know, whatever, you know, and again, this free will and choosing. Um, take what you do here. Don't, don't take a risk. Take what you do know about God and believe, because... If you don't, you are spending eternity in hell. And lately I've had a lot of night flat, like night sweats, and I'm like, I cannot believe how bad hell is going to be if I'm just like, oh my goodness, you know, I need a drink of water, I am sweating. Um, I can't imagine how hell is going to be. All those who reject Jesus Christ are going to hell. It's not if 
you did this or if you didn't do that or if you did this it's all in God sending his son Jesus to die for us and accepting that we need a savior to humble yourself enough like a child and just say we need a savior so last night you know I'm door dashing and I'm like I you know I didn't have much to eat yesterday and I'm like we were talking about fasting and Bible study and I had fasted a little bit the other day and I'm just like how dependent do we have to be on God when we fast right and just like children are very dependent upon their parents when they're little that's how dependent we need to be on God so um, when you are just so prideful that you think you don't need a God you think you're fine you're a pretty good person and you haven't really done anything horrific in life you know you've only just lusted and only you know swear and only lie and no big deal when you think you don't need a savior this is what's going to send you to hell it's that self righteousness that sense of self and spitting in God's face and saying you don't need a savior so as I watched um, the chosen I didn't share this but when I watched it um, it, it was a lot to take in and when we see Jesus on the cross dying for us you can scarcely I mean I can scarcely take it in so one of the scenes in the chosen was um, he t Jesus tells his disciples to go get um, the cult the one that hasn't been written on yet so he they go they find this cult and they do this great scene in the chosen about it and Jesus is riding in to Jerusalem on a cult and to think of the Savior knowing knowing I mean he knew he was dying can you imagine knowing you're dying like in you know a few days how would you live he knows he's dying and then he's taking his death head-on and riding into Jerusalem knowing that he is going to be you know put up on a cross it's just it's overwhelming to think about that he knew his death was ahead of him and he didn't shrink back from it he actually went forward and fulfilled God's plan for him to die on a cross for us and um, it's just every time I see this stuff right around Easter I just get so emotional and I'm not real like I don't really go by my feelings much but with this I do get emotional and it just makes you more thankful for what Jesus did for us and another scene that was really good that the chosen did was um they did the scene with Mary and I mentioned this that she, in another video how she um she knew she knew um the sister of Lazarus Mary she knew that Jesus was going to die and she knew that he was the king of all kings and she went and she brought the most expensive perfume that you could ever buy um, and, uh, and you know anointed his feet and washed his feet with her hair and she did a beautiful act of worship um, and so the the chosen portrays that extremely well and that's how we should be each day really I mean if we can keep and if I can keep that picture in the front of my head we have a king of all kings so when you are rejected um, because of your belief in Christ I got my son here telling me it's time to go hold on so when you are persecuted knowing that Jesus was persecuted he did nothing wrong uh, count it as a badge of honor because we are nothing like Christ right And the disciples years ago actually got was it Peter he got hung up upside down on a cross and said I'm not worthy to be hung upright as Christ was hang me upside down they took a sword they took everything for the gospel so we need to be ready in that sense too in these end days where we are being persecuted for being Christians and to count it as all joy okay thanks for joining me guys Oops, I, my phone is stuck again. Hold on.
I can't get it off. Let's see. Let me go this way. 